Today is part one of a two-part video series looking at special tests or provocation tests that bias towards the labrum of the glenohumeral joint. We're going to be looking at three special tests, and really the third special test has two parts. We're going to begin with active compression, also referred to as the active compression of O'Brien um, for the individual who initially identified this pattern and named it. Secondly, we'll look at Jurgensen's test. And then third, we'll look at biceps load, which has two parts, biceps load one and biceps load two. The common theme with all three of these, though, is the emphasis on the biceps. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So for the first two, Jurgensen's and active compression, you can either have the individual in a seated position or standing position. For comfort today, we'll allow our patient to stay in a seated position. Active compression, is not a fantastic test in terms of specificity, meaning if it's positive, you don't really know what's going on. There could be a whole lot of things. However, if no pain is elicited and it, it comes up as a negative, that's actually quite good because the sensitivity on this test is 0.94, which is fairly high. So the setup is this. You need to have the individual come into 90 degrees of flexion. They're gonna go into the empty can position, which is thumb down internal rotation. And then you're going to bring them to about 10 to 15 degrees horizontal adduction, so they're towards midline of the body. At this point, you're going to provide some overpressure resistance. Hold, hold, hold. And you're going to ask the individual if that reproduces any pain, specifically the pain or their pain. If it does, the next step is to bring them into an externally rotated and supinated position and about 10 to 15 degrees of horizontal abduction. You're then gonna repeat the test, hold, 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 and you're specifically curious if things improve, meaning the pain lessens from position one to position two. A positive would be pain felt in position one that alleviates or lessens in position two. Again, if this test is altogether negative, Sensitivity is quite high, that's a meaningful finding. But if it's positive, you have more work to do. The second test is Jurgensen's. Jurgensen's is going to take advantage of the biceps being a strong supinator. And so we're going to start our patient in about a 90 degree position of elbow flexion and pronation. Now, there's two ways that this test has been defined. One would be that you're grasping just proximal to the wrist and resisting the individual moving into supination, which is gonna bias towards the biceps. The second is that you would actually shape the individual's hand as they do this. So this would be essentially how you uh, are resisting the motion into supination. If you choose the handshake method, recognize that now you've crossed another joint, that being the wrist. And so you have to take that into consideration. So what I find is it's helpful just to use the lumbar pull or C grip, uh, come just proximal to the wrist, and then resist them as they move into supination. That also allows your other hand to palpate proximally at the biceps group. When you're ready, you're gonna make this motion here. Be mindful that you have enough of a grip that you're not creating friction or shear uh, at the patient's skin. That's rather uncomfortable and can create uh, another source of discomfort that can muddy the waters in terms of your test. Now, dissimilar to active compression, this test actually has a fairly high specificity, uh, mainly because it's biasing towards our biceps anchor on the labrum itself. And so when this is positive, uh, we actually have a fairly high specificity of 0.95. So again, if it's positive, very likely that there is a pathology of the labrum. Sensitivity though, very low. All right, so we have two tests left and really they're both part of what's called the biceps load, but there's part one and part two. And for this, we now need our patient to be in a supine position. So we're gonna ask him to lie down. We're gonna bring our treatment table up so that we can maintain good ergonomics and body position in space.
And for these, uh, both of these tests have okay psychometrics. Uh, that be our sensitivity and specificity. Specificity uh, is a little bit higher on biceps uh, load one uh, than sensitivity. Biceps load two has even better psychometrics though. And so really biceps load one has been replaced by biceps load two just because it's a little bit more provocative and in doing so it also gives you a little bit better uh, reliability of the results. Uh, so let's start with biceps load one. We're going to bring the patient to approximately 90 degrees of abduction. They're going to be in 90 degrees of elbow flexion and they're either going to be in a neutral position, palm up, or a supinated position. All right? At this point, the next step is to resist elbow flexion. So you're going to stabilize proximally and you're going to be pulling out. Hold, 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 and relax. Because you're placing a stress across the biceps, you're looking for a reproduction of symptoms. In essence, you're asking yourself whether or not the biceps, when contracting, is pulling on that superior anterior anchor of the labrum. Now, as you can imagine, um, this is an okay position, but if we were to take the individual into a little bit more abduction, about 120 degrees, and maximally externally rotate the arm, and Take the individual into supination, that's just gonna ratchet up the attention on everything. And so biceps load two is really this position. We have 120 degrees of abduction, we have max external rotation, and we have the individual fully supinated. And again, we're gonna provide that resistance of elbow flexion. Hold, 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 and relax. Because that is a little bit more provocative, be careful uh, moving into that position. If you get a positive in biceps load one, you may not necessarily need to go into biceps load two. Again, biceps load two, uh, much better psychometrics, uh, sensitivity and specificity are both greater than 0.9. And so that's a helpful test when considering uh, a, a labral pathology with implication of the biceps tendon, such as a slap lesion or, or uh, similar. So, have a go with these uh, three uh, special tests or provocation tests with a peer or colleague and let me know if there's any questions.